What's poppin' Connor High? Today is October 22nd, 2018. I'm Josue. And I'm Angel. On today's show, we will have a special interview, and we will tell you all about the original Golden Girls. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for today's episode of Total Recap. The original Conroe High School Golden Girls director puts on a good groove of half, at halftime with 99 Illumina to celebrate their 50 years since their graduation of Conroe in 1968. As the once small rural town continues to be one of the quickest growing cities in the United States, and the only thing that these outstanding ladies want of Conroe High School's Golden Girls today is to keep their personality, including how to hold themselves to big standards and the supportive nature of the crew who lay in each other's arms. James Zogo, a li lifelong Huskers fan, was born legally blind. Yesterday, for the first time in his life, he's witnessed his first Husker game in Memorial Stadium. With the help of the special glasses he's owned since February, and thanks to those glasses, he's been able to knock three things off his bucket list. Seeing his wife, his daughter, daughter in his first Huskers game. We'll be right back with our special interview after this commercial break. Removing your hat. No hoodies or hat in the building at all times. Gets us confused. You have a nice day now. Our guest today has been a school counselor at all grade levels. She is a licensed professional counselor or therapist, as some call it, and a nationally certified counselor, Kelly Locke. Thank you so much for being here today. So, Ms. Locke, what exactly is jo your job here at the district? Well, I have a really great job. It's kind of new, but my job is to go around the district and teach students, parents, faculty about mental health and um, just kind of spread awareness, knocking down the stigma of mental health and letting people know that mental health is something that we work on every day. It's not something that we just start when we walk into a therapist's office. It's just really our happiness. So um, helping people build up their happiness is my job. We wanted to talk, today, talk to you today about all the things we're hearing about marijuana and how it works to treat mental illness. Can marijuana be used to treat mental illness? Well, See, that's a broad term because mental illness. I mean, there's so many things inside of that. Like when we talk about physical illnesses, we don't just say like, I have a physical illness. We name it, a cough, a cold. And um, so with mental illness, we have to do the same thing. So most of the research for marijuana is done on depression or the feelings of being sad. It's never said that it's a cure. Um, there are proven in science. There are some websites that will say that, but that's scary because they're being done in a very controlled environment, the purest elements. Um, and so that's not real life. So, and it's, they're never done without a doctor being right there or without a combination of marijuana and therapy. So to just say, well, marijuana is the cure, it's an incorrect statement based on science. Why do people believe that marijuana is the best drug? Uh, I think people right now are looking for an organic or an all natural um, idea or cure for things because there's so much in foods and you know um, fruits and vegetables, all of that, that is unhealthy for us. And it's coming out more and more about chemicals being put into things. So people want that all natural, you know, not a man-made thing, you know. So that's kind of why we jumped on that bandwagon. Why is there no 
no more research on marijuana and mental health. Well, because marijuana is a, it's a drug by, um, labeled by the Food and Drug Administration. And so the government isn't just going to open it up to anyone can use this drug and say it's for research. Um, so there's very controlled um, system is to get approved and very few universities actually meet the qualifications to be approved by the government to test a drug. Um, so that, that's why. As a mental health professional, what scares you most about students experimenting with marijuana? Um, I think that exact term, experiment. Um, that means that they're just playing around with it. Um, so again, when it's done in a lab, it's in a controlled environment, so it is the purest form of the plant. It is clean of any extra chemicals. But when students, you know, if they end up buying drugs off the street, there's no regulations on that. We have no idea that it's not laced with something, that it wasn't sitting in a field full of gasoline before it was sold to us. Um, so it's like comparing apples and oranges. You know, it's like comparing um, the Evian water or the pure filtered water with water we get from um, a pond out back and saying, well, they're the same thing. They're both water. It's healthy for us. You know, um, and so you know, nicotine and cocaine, those both come from plants and, you know, we know that those have harmful effects too. So, um, it's just playing around with it. That, that scares me as to what could happen. Um, because you can have adverse reactions and all of those people who are in a lab, a doctor's right there. So if they had an adverse reaction, a doctor steps in and performs medical treatment. When you're hanging out with your friends, how many doctors are present? Probably not too many. So your brain is not fully developed until the age of 25. So any chemical that you take into your body changes your brain chemistry. It stunts growth of neuro pathways that you need to develop your thinking. So let's think about it. If I asked you, Juan, would you smoke some weed? And there's a chance that it might make one arm stay the same and the other one continue to grow. So you kind of, you know, be a little lopsided. Would you do it? No, no. Well, yeah, most people wouldn't because you can see that change, but that's what's happening in our brain that people don't realize and they are ignoring that fact. Um, and so they say, well, that won't happen to me or nothing's happening. See, I smoke every day and it's perfectly fine. But we know um, that there are harmful effects coming from it. Um, they're just easier to ignore. So it can actually stunt your brain growth. So let's say you start smoking weed at 14. Well, your brain can stop some of the functions at 14, and then you would be an adult with a 14-year-old's brain. Doesn't quite work so well. We appreciate, appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about the topic of marijuana and mental health. Do you have any final thoughts? Um, yeah, so I'm so excited that you guys um, gave me this opportunity because I'm very passionate about helping our students live up to their highest potential. That is why I got into the um, profession of counseling. It's why I do what I do. I want to see students succeed. Um, and I think students need to know that if marijuana is illegal, it is not governed by the Food and Drug Administration. And so there's no governing body that's saying that the chemical makeup is exactly the same. So if you go to a drugstore and you pick up Advil, you are guaranteed that Advil is the same chemical makeup no matter what bottle you get. We can't guarantee that with marijuana. We call a lot of things marijuana that probably don't even have the right chemical makeup to be marijuana. It grew on the plant, but once it's been altered, you know, it's like genetically modified. People won't eat genetically modified food, but they will um, smoke marijuana, you know? And I, it's funny because I talk to students and they tell me, I only eat organic and I'm very natural, and then they smoke weed. And, but weed is a chemical, and that's what you're putting inside of your body. So um, that's pretty scary. And all the research that's coming out that says students who smoke weed on a daily basis are 60% less likely to graduate from high school or college than their peers who don't smoke weed. You know, and um, they're seven times more likely to attempt suicide. Those are scary statistics for something we just want to play around with. Um, 
you know, no one's coming out and showing that Colorado's graduation rate has dropped since legalizing marijuana, you know? So there's a lot of adverse effects that people don't want to talk about. Um, so again, I just want everyone to be able to reach their highest potential, reach their dreams in life. So hopefully getting the word out like this, hanging out with you today, um, will help change somebody's life. Well, thank you, Ms. Log. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We want to finish up our newscast today with a few announcements. Come on out to the orchestra concert Monday, October 22nd, 2018. This concert features a celestial theme as well as our first ever mariachi assembly. Our first concert is at 6 p.m. and our second concert is at 7.30 p.m. They are two different concerts. It's going to be an exciting event, so come out and show out your support and enjoy the show. Come show your talent this year's talent show on November 15th. Sign up for auditions by scanning one of the QR codes on any talent show poster. Audition starts today and go on until Thursday, so hurry up and secure your spot. Congratulations to this week's Varsity Cheerleader of the Week, Brianna Penna. Interact Club is selling Scream World tickets on, from October 15th until October 31st to support Montgomery County Women's Shelter. If you are interested in purchasing tickets, see Ms. Pierce in room 154 or Ms. Cook in, in, in room 414. Ninth graders, see Ms. Cox for tickets. Save the date on October 25th from 6 to 8 for the, for the Career Expo at the Lone Star Convention Center. It is a great way to see what programs are offering and help if you are interested in a career. Chemistry Club's Halloween meeting it will, be on, will be in room 208 starting at 2.50 to 3.30. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to follow us at KTAG News on all social medias and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, CHS start strong, finish strong. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for KTIG News.